We have now come to the last session of this meeting. Our next speaker is one of the most important players in the field of single source genomics. Let's welcome Ido Amit, who is from Israel. Ido Amit is a professor at the immunology department at the Weizmann Institute of Science. His lab pioneered single source genomic technologies and their application to characterize the immune system. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Goji, for um, uh, inviting me for the talk here and, and for organizing the Asia Human Cell Atlas. This is such an important meeting um, in general and in, in these days uh, more than ever. So um, I think uh, um, we do not need to introduce why understanding immunology these days is uh, of extreme importance and uh, really understanding all of the different subsets of immune cells and, and how they may go uh, weary under uh, different uh, conditions. So um, relevant to these days, I'm going to start by a bit of introduction of some of our work on uh, COVID-19 and uh, using uh, single cell approaches to understand how the immunology, uh, immune system is modified uh, under uh, COVID infection and specifically under uh, uh, COVID infection that go uh, uh, towards uh, more patho pathological states. Um, our uh, entry into this was through uh, work we did over the years to really understand the differences between viruses, uh, cells that are infected with virus and therefore change their activity, so the interaction between the host uh, and the virus, and the bystander effects that are uh, going on in the tissue given the uh, signaling of the uh, immune system itself uh, towards the cells in the periphery. And the idea is uh, very basic, although it, it took us uh, some time to uh, generate a, a robust uh, a working pipeline for this. And the idea is to uh, use not only the um, genes that we align to the human database or the host database, but also to a very large uh, compendium of viral genome uh, that we assembled. And then the idea is straightforward to try to understand how within our uh, atlas uh, of uh, immune and in, in general of all of the cells within the tissue, where is the infection uh, introduced, what type of infection, which type of viruses, and uh, as you see, uh, even in our uh, very initial work on uh, the uh, COVID, we, we see uh, a lot of unexpected uh, infections. So I'm going to primarily talk about uh, two data sets that are uh, already uh, published. So work uh, with uh, uh, Zheng Zhang and Xu Zhang in uh, uh, Shenzhen Hospital. Again, uh, amazing collaborative work that started by, by a tweet. Um, and uh, our description of such an algorithm and, and uh, the need to collaborate on this, and, and uh, they picked up the ball and it was, uh, and it still is a very uh, fantastic uh, collaboration in understanding a viral infection, not only uh, COVID, um, and then uh, increasing it to larger and larger cohorts uh, that we are now uh, assembling. So um, one. Uh, really uh, dramatic uh, founding, finding that we saw using this uh, uh, first single cell atlas of the uh, lungs of uh, COVID in infect infected patients, mainly focusing on the difference between patients that have a more a mild disease versus the more uh, pathological cases. We saw very uh, dramatic differences both in the uh, compartment, the um, myeloid compartment, Really, the, the, the uh, most uh, clear change uh, was the, change, the uh, uh, apoptosis of uh, alveolar macrophages and the uh, elimination of the alveolar macrophages uh, from the lung, which uh, keep a more immune uh, suppressed uh, environment, and their replacement with uh, monocytes <coughs> and the uh, monocytes will differenti differentiate into macrophages, which are uh, much more inflammatory under this condition. So that, that was the first and very uh, apparent uh, and dramatic change, and that is uh, going alongside with secretion of a lot of uh, inflammatory cytokine, and I dare not call it a cytokine storm. So it's a very specific set of cytokine that are secreted there. <clears throat> and the second uh, event, uh, again, very dramatic, 
is that within the uh, mild patient and, and patients who have a, a very uh, uh, decay disease or a disease that is not uh, showing a strong uh, um, a pa pathology, what we see is a T specific T cells to the virus, uh, different uh, clonal uh, effector cells and memory cells, whereas in the uh, severe patient, one uh, observes uh, much more uh, naive T cells that do not seem to recognize uh, the virus and, and generate uh, clonality in face of it. And again, we're talking about patients that when we see them in the ICU, most of them uh, hardly have any uh, virus at, at that point, at the, something in the range of uh, three weeks uh, post-infection. Um, we can see this uh, basically uh, summarized here. So there is um, some uh, changes in the uh, 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 CD4 T cells. Again, um, these naive CD4 T cells are, are mostly seen in the severe patient. There's a huge drop. Uh, from the mild to severe in these uh, clonal uh, uh, T memory cells and uh, some increase in, in NK cells. And, and again, this is the, what I uh, described in the alveolar macrophage and the, and the change in the, uh, and they're being replaced by uh, monocyte-derived uh, macrophages and, and monocytes in general. <clears throat> so that was a, a first and, and, and uh, a more limited cohort that is, that is growing uh, at that time. Uh, since then, we collected many, many uh, more patients, and uh, this uh, observation uh, that we had originally is extremely robust, so we see it in, in uh, every cohort uh, that we look at. Here is a, a cohort of uh, around uh, 30 patients from uh, uh, the Verona area. This is a collaboration with, uh, with, with Vincenzo Ponte and his team from uh, Verona. Um, and, and uh, the same observa the observation holds uh, very strong, um, a huge decrease uh, from these uh, memory CD8s in the uh, more mild patient to the severe patient having mostly naive T cells. Um, and that is completely uh, correlated with the uh, amount of uh, pathology we would uh, see in, in the patient, as one can see here in the SOFA uh, uh, curve. Um, as I mentioned, our goal is to really understand uh, the interaction of, of the virus uh, with the host in these studies. And these are some of the benchmarking experiments we did where we, at that case, knew which virus we're introducing into uh, mice in this case. And uh, that allowed us to really uh, calibrate and, and, and improve the algorithm so we have uh, better specificity. And again, viruses have uh, repeated elements and so on to, to uh, allow us to uh, remove all, all types of noise and, and make the algorithm better. And then going um, into the uh, real data, <clears throat> um, what we saw are uh, uh, what we expected. Again, we, we identified uh, with our algorithm uh, the SARS-CoV-2. Again, in some of, of the patients, mostly in the um, severe patient, I have to say the levels were not extremely high, except for one case that I'll show a bit later. But what was really surprising is that we started to see that there is a secondary co-infection that it was mentioned to other uh, uh, viruses from the same, uh, from coronavirus. And, and this is, uh, su su was suggested that this might be on these other viruses, uh, what uh, generates a more severe disease. And indeed, in this uh, uh, cohort, we found human uh, metapneumovirus and in this case, the virus are not in a low amount, but actually take a, a, a very substantial amount of the molecules uh, that we identify in, in the patients. Um, and this diverts, uh, again, the, the immune system uh, in the lung of these patients very dramatically to a very high uh, type 1 interferon uh, signaling and, and, and secretion. We think that uh, has to do with uh, a non-proper uh, immune response. Again, most of the cases, patients that have these secondary effects uh, uh, do show a, a very a, a severe outcome and, and in many cases death. <clears throat> this is just an example of where, uh, which cells we actually observe uh, uh, these infections. So uh, mo while most of the uh, corona, uh, the uh, SARS-CoV-2 we identify within epithelial cells, a, a little bit in macrophages, though we can't separate whether these are macrophages that are actually engulfing uh, the epithelial cells. 
Um, the pneumonia virus was mostly uh, seen in, in monocytes, and, and again, these had a very uh, um, abrupt and uh, a robust uh, uh, type 1 response, which we think interferes with the uh, normal progression towards a, a, a productive uh, immune response. <clears throat> Within, uh, if we go to the second court, again, we saw uh, many uh, co-infections. Uh, I'm showing uh, in, in two patients here. The infection were different. They were, so it wasn't with the pneumonia virus like we've seen in, in Sengen, but actually HSV1 uh, virus in the cases. So. Uh, what we think is happening that once um, the immune system becomes weak, this uh, by the coronavirus, it allows for the secondary of uh, infection, which then uh, really increase uh, the pathology. Um, obviously, from this data, one can really learn uh, the structure of the uh, viruses and start to understand how this impacts um, the uh, immune system and how this uh, influences. Uh, not only the infected cells, but also the bystander cells. So we think this is a very productive uh, direction, and we encourage people to use uh, uh, this algorithm uh, more and more. So uh, just to summarize, and, and um, it, we, within the study, in the, uh, the Verona study and the others, we're trying to uh, take these experiments with our starting observational, as we like to do, to move them to more uh, uh, functional uh, experiments. and. Um, we do see uh, very dramatic changes in these severe uh, patients. So while in the mild patient, what we see as a consequence of the infection, there's also initiation of feedbacks, uh, which uh, suppress and, and uh, are actually checkpoints to stop the immune system, like expression of arginase 1 in uh, various myeloids. So I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit later. And other checkpoints on... Uh, on uh, granulocytes and, 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 and T cells, within the severe patient, we don't see these breaks coming on. So if we take from the blood of a mild patient, these uh, myeloid cells, they will suppress uh, quite effectively um, T cell responses, while that we don't see that uh, same phenomena when we take um, uh, such uh, cells from the blood of the severe cases. So there is still a lot uh, to learn here. But we think uh, this is a lot of this is driven by this uh, inability of the immune system to uh, uh, stop its activity, almost like autoimmune response, and that uh, with the secondary inf infection really causes this uh, dramatic pathology. Um, I'd like to uh, move forward to uh, two new uh, technologies that we think are um, of extreme uh, importance to incorporate into uh, the Human Cell Atlas. A lot of this was also uh, funded and helped by the uh, uh, CZI, by the CZI seed networks and, and, and so on. So the roots of the HCA. And that is to uh, better understand within uh, uh, complete tissue and the immune system how interaction between cells and how the signaling within the cells is really impacting the uh, overall physiology or pathology. And I think that will allow us to build a more uh, a deeper understanding of the atlases we currently have and we're uh, building. So um, it's, it's not, a, uh, I think it's obvious for everyone uh, of the, in this consortium that we need better technology to understand the aspect of, of time and uh, as, uh, uh, is very clear. The immune system is a very dynamic system, which is changing uh, due to perturbations and uh, diseases, but, uh, pathologies, and so on. Uh, spatial organization, cell, cell communication, the clonal relationship, being able to uh, understand this data uh, alongside genetic perturbation and, and the TCR and BCR. And these are all technologies we are uh, constantly trying to uh, develop and expand as uh, the rest of the community is. Um, and our uh, initial goal to understand uh, communication between various cells within the tissue was uh, this uh, study by uh, Meirav and uh, Amir, who tried to use ligand receptor pair to understand the communication of various immune subsets uh, with themselves and, and with the rest of the lung tissue. Um, and, uh, the, and such analysis by our group and others, I think, really allowed to understand uh, new types of uh, biology, which is critical, and, and immunobiology, which is uh, extremely uh, critical in understanding such communication in the lung. And what we uh, found is that uh, through IL-33 signaling, 
um, 82 cells modify and prime a, a basophil to become lung resident basophil who uh, using various uh, cytokines uh, signal to a macrophage to uh, adopt them to become alveolar uh, macrophages which are uh, very critical to restrict uh, overactivation in uh, immune responses such as uh, the case of COVID-19. So that finding um, really pushed us to understand that what, the tools we actually want is to understand how cells communicate with one another in a way that would be deterministic, not using uh, such ligand receptor pairs, which uh, uh, give you a very wide spectrum of potential interaction, but one does not really know which one of them are actually uh, uh, true and, and happening within the tissue at the, at the point of time that one is looking. And um, what Meirav and Amir developed is this uh, approach uh, to understand such interaction, and, and usually such interaction, for example, between T cells and, and myeloid cells, forming these synapses of uh, antigen presentation or uh, 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 repression of uh, T cells, specific T cells is a, is a rare event. And to capture it, it, it may not be enough to look at ligand receptor pair, and it, and it may not be enough to um, do other uh, uh, approaches, but perhaps we need an approach to specifically target those pairs, and that's what uh, Mehrab and, and Amir built. It, and that basically uses, uh, again, the ability of the facts to um, look at uh, individual markers, for example, a marker for a T cell, a marker for a, 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 an antigen presenting cell, and then look for these rare events where you see both markers on the same. Uh, uh, conjugate, okay, on the same uh, cell, basically, which is a few, uh, two cells uh, communicating together. And the basic idea is to uh, sort each one of these uh, different uh, subsets, individual uh, of cell one, cell two, and, and the conjugate. And that um, helps us to start to understand uh, their, uh, their uh, signaling. And again, this uh, uh, was published, so I'm going very quickly at it, at this data. But the basic idea is we have these different cells, and, and initially we uh, sort them as singlets, and uh, this is used to actually simulate all potential doublets. And this uh, simulated doublets allows us to um, uh, analytically remove all kinds of uh, artifacts in, in such data, and that is doublets that are formed in vitro and so on and, for, uh, and so forth and really uh, understand which uh, interaction are happening more frequent than we would expect, which are likely happening um, uh, in vivo, in, in situ, in the tissue. <clears throat> and then, not only that, but also understand which uh, molecules are over-represented, uh, meaning they are a part of the likely interaction signaling between these two subsets, and then understand uh, by deconvolution, which molecules are uh, relevant to which uh, one of the cell types and which one are induced because of the interaction. Um, again, this uh, system actually uh, is improving uh, on a daily basis, so we are going more and more into uh, a complex uh, human uh, tissue, again, making it relevant for the uh, human cell atlas goal. This is just an example of one such cell that we sorted and then visualized showing this beautiful uh, synapse uh, with the uh, TCR here of um, uh, myeloid cells, dendritic cells, and, and, and uh, T cells. Um, where we're going with this, as I mentioned, is going into human uh, tissue. I'll show you a collaboration um, uh, uh, with the lab of Miam uh, Mehad from Mount Sinai and the lab of uh, Amos Tanai, where we um, specifically look at uh, such interaction of uh, T cells and myeloid cells in. Uh, the uh, non-small cell lung cancer tumors and the, the adjunct uh, uh, tissue, uh, the healthy tissue, if you will. Again, looking at myeloid markers, T cell markers, and, and the peaks. And the goal is to understand which such interaction are happening in uh, TME versus the normal tissue. Um, uh, long uh, story uh, short, uh, we find very uh, interested in, in non-expected uh, uh, interaction. One uh, specific interaction that uh, we are focusing on is an interaction with the, what we call a tumor T helper cell. So it's a specific T helper, specific CD4 uh, to the tumor with a very uh, specific characteristics of uh, molecules, uh, uh, both uh, signaling and checkpoints. Um, uh, again, this is a, a, a 
CD4, which is completely different from the uh, Treg uh, signature, we can identify it in, in various uh, uh, sites uh, within uh, the tumor, so this physical interaction. Um, we moved on then to uh, make a mouse model that uh, recapitulates this phenomena and are uh, constantly investigating this uh, CD4 uh, T cells and, and what uh, potentially it might uh, do function in the tumor and how we can uh, modulate it. So this is a very uh, exciting uh, uh, direction. And again, the entire uh, discovery and understanding was generated because we can start to see such interaction and identify this uh, relatively rare uh, CD4 T cell, but when you look at it in the face of interaction with the, with the APCs and dendritic cells, you see that these are very uh, major uh, cells in the, in the tissue. So in this case, this is the um, such interaction visualized uh, in mouse tissue. Um, moving forward to um, the last technology, uh, how, how much time do I have uh, left? Rauji, can you tell me how much time do I have left? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's about uh, five minutes left. Five minutes. All right. So I, I, it, it's a work that just came out, so I'll try to go uh, fast and finish on time. I know um, we want to keep a tight schedule here. So uh, again, this is another... Um, uh, new technology uh, just published. And I think it has two major uh, areas of, of importance uh, thinking about the human cell atlas. On one hand, it uh, can allow us to uh, improve uh, our uh, maps by adding additional information, signaling information, metabolic information, information about transcription factors. And as we know, play a very uh, uh, important role in, in defining the different cell states that we look at. So this is one. A obvious advantage. The second advantage is that this uh, fixative also allows us to uh, keep the tissues uh, for a very long time and, uh, and uh, keep them in a, a condition that are uh, almost as good as uh, fresh tissues. Uh, I'll show that in a second. And I think that can be uh, widely used for di dis distributing uh, uh, samples uh, across the world, which is, I think, currently a bit limiting. So, the basic idea that we struggled with and, and have solved, and I think this was a struggle for many, is to actually be able to uh, fix e all of the uh, content of the cell, protein, and, and so on, while uh, an RNA, while uh, being able to uh, permeabilize and uh, open the membrane, which allows us to then uh, introduce antibodies and other uh, contents inside. And in uh, all cases we looked at, all fixative and, and other reagents we tried, once you uh, permeabilize the cells or fix them, you uh, degrade uh, most of the RNA. Um, again, with our uh, specific uh, fixative, which is a combination of different uh, uh, salts and solvents, it allows us to actually permeabilize the cell while maintaining the RNA intact. And then one can um, label the different uh, protein modification and so on with uh, antibodies. Uh, either fluorescently labeled and uh, hopefully you want to introduce uh, soon that are uh, labeled by uh, sequence specific and then run it through uh, either our, our uh, MARSEC or through uh, droplet approaches and uh, understand the context of uh, the transcriptional state in front of uh, various uh, other layers of information, metabolic transcription factor signaling, um, spearheaded by these uh, uh, two brilliant, uh, or actually three brilliant uh, PhD students and uh, Asaf Weiner, uh, staff scientist in lab and Ito Yofre, a postdoc in the lab. Um, I I'll go very quickly, I think I'm out of time. Again, um, several methods and IR insect is uh, really uh, allowing you to uh, permeabilize the cell and introduce antibodies, others are not. And what it also uh, does, uh, unlike any of the other uh, uh, known uh, uh, currently uh, fixatives, it allows it to preserve the RNA, and these are the levels that one gets with uh, fresh cells, and this is also uh, uh, preserved RNA for a very uh, long amount of time. Again, it's hundreds and, and thousands of fold more than any of the other fixatives we've, we've tested. The cell composition, um, once you run it on a 10x, is a, exactly similar to the uh, first sample, and basically one sees the same uh, genes uh, and, and gene signature that uh, one has on uh, fresh cells. This is 
true for a very large number of tissues we have uh, uh, calibrated by now, and this, these are uh, PBMC. Um, as I mentioned, this allows you now to go and start to uh, understand the context and even sort and, and, and focus on specific uh, transcription factor. For example, over here we sorted a T-reg from a PBMC, and you can see they're uh, uh, quite rare, and only once we uh, sort for FOXP3 uh, positive uh, cell with an antibody, we can really enrich for these cell uh, uh, almost 60%. So um, this allows us to then go and do uh, all kinds of uh, combinatorics of different transcription factor and identify uh, various uh, T cell subsets, uh, for example, uh, different uh, memory, rare memory cells in, in, in tissues and so on, looking uh, at such combination of transcription factor. I think it's going to be extremely uh, um, enlightening for, for many of us uh, to, to push on this approach. It also has a translational aspect, we can, we can start to understand what is the different in different subsets of cell in specific tissues. For example, we would want to target Tregs only in the tumors and not in the periphery to avoid uh, secondary effects. And, and this really allows us uh, to do such uh, uh, important discovery. Um, last point, I'll try to do it in two minutes. I see time is running out. Um, going and better understanding a various myeloid subset, for example, some of the most a, a potent uh, inhibitory myeloid cells or myeloid derived suppressive cells, what they're called, are really cells that have no uh, extracellular marker. They're uh, impossible to define by such markers. And uh, only these um, intracellular metabolic activities are defining these cells, which make it very difficult to study them and understand them in this context. Uh, we always get a very mixed population. And what we did is uh, very simply label these specific metabolic activities. In this case, I'm so showing you ARG1 uh, positive myeloid cell. And once we uh, uh, did such uh, an effort, we uh, really identified the various uh, subsets of, of myeloid cells in which uh, uh, inhibitory activities they, they conquer. So really uh, breaking the myeloid or suppressor cells into very specific groups, which we understand now very well all of their uh, markers. Um, I go very uh, rapidly on this one. A very interesting uh, uh, receptor which we uh, worked on in the past, which is called TREM2, was found to be very much uh, correlated with uh, such a myeloid suppressive activity, as I'm showing here. TREM2 is of high interest to us. Again, we show this, this uh, signaling uh, pathway is almost uh, not uh, active within uh, immune cells in health, but um, only uh, within uh, a disease. This is, and actually removed, had a beautiful uh, picture of how uh, in the human cell atlas, only in uh, brain microglia and, and the bone, you have a little bit of expression of TREM2, while in pathology, it's expression in, in uh, many areas. And what we've uh, learned over the years is that this uh, receptor activates a very uh, robust immunosuppressive activity. Thank <clears throat> you. What? Control the All time. Right. One, one slide and a half, all right? <clears throat> um, uh, and then again, with knockout, we've shown that uh, the tumors would grow uh, much slower uh, uh, without TREM2 again because of its immunosuppressive activity, and that really modifies the uh, suppressive environment within tumor, dysfunctional T cells, and so on and so forth. Um, need to thank the amazing uh, people who did the work, uh, wonderful collaboration, as I mentioned, with Amos Tanai, Ton Schumacher, Miriam Merad, uh, and uh, people I mentioned all, uh, all along, and uh, our great funders. Thank you, and, and sorry for going a bit over time. Great talk. Great talk, I know. I mean, um, I really, I'm not an expert on immunology, but really like, um, you know, all of these fancy technologies that, uh, you have, you know, developed uh, to advance the single cell genomics. Um, I think um, one of the qu one question I wanted to ask exactly uh, your beautiful work in combining index sorting with single cell RNA seq, and how would those results compare to site seq? And is there any uh, interesting thing that is different between the two methodology? <clears throat> um, yeah. So. SiteSeq is a great technology, and, and, and I think now it's uh, really uh, very widely used, and, and that's, I think, uh, allows it to uh, constantly uh, improve. Um, 
the point that uh, Sightseek is uh, focusing, there, I, I would say there's two differences that people should consider. So uh, Sightseek is for quantifying proteins and it's for quantifying currently extracellular proteins. So uh, what the approach we like to do is to use the facts also to, to zoom in and focus on specific population, right? And for that, you need uh, uh, to see the amount of protein in, 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 in live. And what uh, these fluorescent markers allow you to do, and, and I have to say through our uh, very fun and collaborative work with BD, we are con con constantly uh, increasing the amount of uh, fluorescent markers that you can use and actually on the fly really decide, okay, here are the important cells I want to focus on and, and really focus on them and only sequence them. Um, you know, uh, the new uh, sorters uh, that are going to come out or are coming out now can do 40 such uh, protein. That's going to be very important for our community, uh, immune and, and, and another. Uh, so that's one feature, okay? So the site sick, you have to uh, predetermine and, and you quantify, but you cannot uh, use it to. The, the second uh, difference is that um, it looks, uh, it, it only uses the extracellular uh, markers. We are uh, also very interested in the intracellular signaling metabolism. And, and, um, but um, the good thing is we hope to merge these and, and have our, our technology also relevant for uh, sightseek. There's still some problems in the fact that uh, uh, introducing nucleic acid uh, into the cell at this point generates uh, quite a substantial amount of noise, so the signal to noise is not as as good as with fluorescent, and we hope to solve that by uh, various blocking uh, mechanism. If people have ideas, we are really welcome collaboration on that end. Great, and then we have a uh, question from the audience. So Shian asks, is there a version of the viral track algorithm that uses sequence information from both ends of the pair and read. Yeah. So, that? Yeah, so the, the, this algorithm was uh, developed by a brilliant, actually I now remember, I just introduced uh, yesterday the slides on this because you said you wanted to uh, have a, yeah. So uh, a brilliant PhD student uh, called uh, Pierre Bost and uh, we, we are working on that. So. Uh, th that will be introduced hopefully uh, soon. Uh, so, but at, at this point, I, I think uh, if you go into the current version, I think it will not support this. But I can uh, uh, respond, you know, if it's uh, and answer the community if you can forward when it's expected to come out, hopefully soon. Okay, because of time, um, we have to move to the next speaker.